Good day, gamers. So, now that we have the complete Jurassic ecosystem, I think it's fair to do a little tier list of it. So, today I will rank them in terms of price, because it is an integral part of the game and whenever I see a tier list of this, I never see it mentioned. Remember, this isn't a game like Path of Titans, The Isle or Beast of Bermuda where you can pick whatever you want to. This game has a clear progression system and as a core mechanic of it, it will be taken into consideration. Price doesn't equal strength, but it is a resource that has to be used and needs a lot of time to get. Stats, because obviously. Gameplay, because it is the most important part of any dino. And how you get them. This is exclusively for Apex tier dinos. This criteria, alongside an analysis of every dino individually, this mainly to avoid those moments of just saying getting a pack for hell because what stops me from just putting all dinos on the top because I can mega pack and have half the server as anything and essentially trivializing any form of balance. I will only mention packs when it's required. So all of this will be used alongside my own experience and as such bias is inevitable is inevitable. Okay? Also this is just for fun, this is just my opinion, you can have a different one and that's fine. I should also mention that I don't think any dino here is unplayable. If you think so, then that's a skill issue. With enough skill you can defend yourself against your adversaries and you will know the best places to grow. Except for one dino. Now. After saying the most useless words on the internet, let's get right into it, shall we? First, let's talk a little bit about the Jurassic ecosystem. It's a big and diverse map based off of primarily the Morrison Formation and its homologous in Europe and Africa that pretty much had the same type of ecosystem with similar genera. Having lush forests, green prairies full of ferns, big lakes where everyone seemed to be, rivers full of crocodiles, massive cave systems, beautiful beaches, and a massive desert that you will think it is where everyone is by the huge amounts of corpses of people just trying to migrate through it. So, uh, it's basically just Mexico. This map is full with open spaces with for sauropods to roam and many smaller creatures having their double stamina pool used for exploration and hectic chases that can last quite a lot. Truly one of the best maps they released so far. So, starting all the way down, all the way to D tier, the last place in the Jurassic Ecosystem tier list is... As an apex tier, Diplo is, has been and will always be a problem in balancing. However, as of this video's release, its speed has been neutered to the point of, you know, if you want to play Diplo you must always keep yourself hidden from Sauros, Torvos and even Alos when growing if you're solo, not to mention that a pack of Sauros or even a singular if you, are not, if you are just unlucky with the lag, are a problem. And sure, Allo is now physically incapable of hunting an adult Diplo after the damage increase. But it was increased in the first place because of these two, especially South. It really can just run you down as they have a higher sprint speed, the same stamina pool, and a faster trotting speed. So a persistent sorrow pack can catch up to you and you can do anything about it. But some of you might say, but Tamago, I see huge herds of Diplo roaming around, 
Obviously Diplo is an un unviable corpse that sometimes fight back and can really only have a chance to survive against a single sorrow after eldering for 10 hours and beneath a big body of water. Well, have you ever wondered why you only see them in herds? Packing is a tool, a suggestion a little help in survivability and success, but something that you're perfectly fine without, for the most part, except with Diplo. It's an obligation to be in a herd. It just isn't fast enough or tanky enough to survive against the big boys. Its inconsistency also brings it down a lot. And let's be real, having the stomp should be enough reason to bring it down. And by costing 600,000 amber after mastering Yunano, makes Diplo the last member of this list. Being quite fast in both sprints and trot and having quite the tail and claws, Yunano might seem as a fantastic dino. But it uh, really isn't. Its claw attack is pretty much unusable thanks to its hitboxes being very small, and this causes that its playstyle becomes just a worse way to play a Hadrosaur. However, its speed, damage, and tankiness, and relatively low cost, keeps it just over last place. Yeah. <laughs> To be completely honest, Kentro is just outdated and, to some extent, outmatched. The Jurassic ecosystem is full of strong, fast and resilient carnivores, and many of them aren't even weak to its attack types. It's also slow enough for its attack to be hard to aim against its predators, which are way faster than it. And even though it's technically the biggest dinosaur to get a weekly amber boost, this still makes Kentro just a mastery requirement and not really worth the time. And yes, I just beat a Ceratos Kentro here, but ignore that. Now we go for C tier. For those dinos that are better and have better chances of survival. Starting with... As the only pseudo-apex carnivore, Yang is in a weird spot. It is strong, it has rally, it is quite resistant, but there's nothing to use that strength with. Stego can obliterate you, Yunano can, out can outrun you, and you can't do anything against Sauropods or the smaller tiers. However, it's still incredibly strong, especially in packs, and if you play it as some sort of bully for the bigger tiers or smaller, you can really throw them out of their prey, and if they hear your broadcasts, they better get ready to go. Boy, I sure hope this sort of playstyle gets expanded upon and makes Yang quite a big bad bully for anything he wants to throw hands with. Because it would be crazy if something bad happened to Yang. For a starter, Skeleto is quite a tough nut to crack, and very propense to breaking legs. However, as a starter herbivore that is hard to kill, it's just a starter at the end of the day, the proto of the Jurassic. But my main gripe with Skeleto is that it's just a borrower. Let me explain. Why do you play as small tiers? Well, other than the fact that you just want to play as them. Well, to go spelunking. The inability of Skeleto to jump really hinders its replayability. Fossil worms and gems spelunking are an important 
or the most important, part of small tears. That's why Gian is fairly used and the most used when trying to get fossils and gemstones in the Cretaceous mixed ecosystem because it's small, fast, nocturnal and can jump. This is why Skeleto isn't that good of a dino when doing its job. Even Kanto is better and it can't get trampled by a lot of things, basically making its armor useless. Though I must admit, it has better chances of surviving in its burrows thanks to its flat shape, but it's very propense to overheating. Being a second tier apex, needing to master Diplo to get, Apato has a better chance of fending off sorrows. Even three sorrows will have problems with an elder Apato, if the Apato plays right. However, most of the time this depends more on where you are, aka near water or a cliff. Overall, for having to master deep in Yunano, Apato shows the strength and bulk to survive whatever it should, and two of them are enough to be completely safe for the most part. At this point in the B tier, the ranking has become incredibly hard because all of the next dinos are just straight up great and really strong in every hand, though we are still pro all propensed to having bad randoms like everyone. <laughs> The second starter creature of the Jurassic, it's the fastest carnivore, the second only that can jump and nocturnal. It has also a rally. However, its strength is purely in packs, with which it can even bring down some strong meteors. It all it's also the best cave runner by far in the ecosystem, and its strength is in, in numbers is just absurd. I've seen Guan Longs bring down some weird prey items. And I'm talking about what Alo should be doing. And as I say with Skeleto, being the best fossil hunter and cave runner increases its replayability. It's also very fun. Though not being able to see the dust bits in the minima and not being able to eat rotten food are some issues. However, it's truly the best starter in the Jurassic. This is the real starter herbivore, and the most underrated dino in the Jurassic. It's the fastest herbivore in the game, well, in the Jurassic, being able to jump and also has some incredible strength for what it is, but it only needs that for the faster and smaller dinos, whose kicks can easily cripple them. And it's also a pretty effective resource runner, which is only in danger from dilos and one long packs, making it a solid dino to get. Being the premier night hunter, Dilo has gotten some pretty good speed, bleed and size. A good Dilo can really mess up bigger boys like Alo, Serato, and even mess up really good sub adult apexes with a group and the correct skin at night. Melanistic. Its main issue, however, is how frail it is, being able to get to be killed by a few hits, and of course, not being able to eat rotten meat is still something to be taken into consideration. After all, Half of the carnivore roster can't eat rotten meat, so this isn't that big of a deal in dialogue, which can just smell and find better corpses. Which is truly the underrated carnivore and, with the right set of skills, you can become a menace. The only semi-aquatic in the Jurassic Makimo fulfills the same role as ATUs before the Crocs addition to the game. It is the fastest swimmer, has some good bleed, and the entire river and sea are its territory. People underestimate Makimo, 
especially Serratos, which are a nuisance, and with nuisance I really mean nuisance, because they just want to run at you and start biting you, and then they see that their arteries are torn open, so they run away, as they realize their poor life choices. The only downsides are its complete reliance on water, being by far the slowest carnivore in land, even using its slippery ability. The fact that these waters are really narrow as well, there is almost no space, and not being able to kill stuff is if they run away, and the sun well being. Truly one of the mechanics of all time. Other than that, the only true danger for a Makimo is another Makimo. Now we get to the big boys, the A tiers. These are just overall good dinos that are well worth their price in amber. Starting with. Brachio is quite literally unbeatable once adult, not even make me talk about Elder. A full pack of sorrows will have a massive trouble when trying to bring down this behemoth, and the Elder can really be completely safe from anything that is in a full pack of Elder skilled sorrows, all with infection. And even then, it will be an extremely long battle that can be completely avoided by going to water. And yes, water camping and cliff camping is annoying, but also a strategy whether we like it or not. So, if I think Brachio is this strong and untouchable, why is it low in the A tier? Well, to make a long story short, you have to master Yunano, Diplo, and a battle to get Brachio, which makes it 3,675,000 amber plus getting 5 million for Brachio itself. It's just way too much for me to put it higher than other apexes. As an apex, Stego has some massive attack power with bleed making it an incredibly dangerous prey to Torvos, which are really their only hunters because Sauron really gets its weak split by Stego. Its sheer bulk and Thagomizers make it completely worth to get. It's also the second cheapest Apex just behind Diplo at 1 million, but having to master two dinos it's still quite a problem, but still, Torvos are your only problem as Stego. Alo has always been the king of consistency, but now not being bullied by Vistas, Ictis, Ceratopsians and not being spawn killed religiously by Carnos have made Alo one of the best dinos and the second best mid-tier carnivore in the Jurassic. Three good Alos can really take the money off of a Torbo, and a full pack can really be something to fear. Fast runner, good trotting speed, amazing bleed and an iconic look makes it a fantastic dino to play with friends as God intended, so that, you know, you don't suffer from neuron deficiency. So, now, for the top 3, the best dinos for the coast in the Jurassic, the S tiers. In third place, we have... Now, Torvo has an interesting history in the game. It has always been the strongest land carnivore since its inclusion in the river, and it keeps that the strongest apex tier. The main carnivore you have to worry about if you are not a herbivore is Torvo, doing well over a thousand damage with its attacks that are incredibly spammable, quite tanky and as fast as Sauro, at least in running, makes adult Torvo a beast. Wait, wait, wait. 
You, you say you had you ha What do you mean he has elder? <laughs> yeah, I think that mastering Serato and Yang then paying 2 million is worth. A single turbo can dominate whatever it is and a pack is just a terrifying sight for everyone. Even though I just say that Torvo is the strongest Apex Carnivore like 20 seconds ago, Sauro is the best Apex Carnivore, mainly because breed damage is just overpowered. A single hit from an adult is enough to erase from the existence 90% of your health bar, at the very least. Its speed is enough to chase down a lot of dinos, and because you can now use your scent as it was supposed to be used, you can track down any smaller dinos that was bleeding, so you can't really escape a sorrow on the hunt. Not to mention that it is the premier sauropod hunter of the Jurassic, being the sole reason why being in a herd as a Diplo isn't a suggestion but an obligation and the reason why all sauropods can be found near big bodies of water. No other dino brings the fear of God in the ecosystem other than the maximum lord of the lizard eaters. And it's only unlocked by mastering Allosaurus and Concavenator. Boy, I sure hope nothing happens to Conca after being in the game since ever. Wouldn't it be crazy if something were to happen to it? But, as you will see, it is only just the second place. Not even a contest over here. For what is the single best dinosaur, not only in the Jurassic, but in the entire game. It costs 4000 Amber. It has great stats with great strength, durability, speed in both land and in water, nocturnal, can eat rotten meat and fish, can be just fine alone acting as a small game hunter or a scavenger, or in packs embracing fully the hyena playstyle it's supposed to have, running down its prey, bullying other carnivores of a body, controlling the population of babies, it's just perfect. The only thing it can do is jump, but you don't need it. Fast, strong, cheap, versatile, the best dinosaur of the Jurassic and in the game. Anyway, this is the tier list. If you want to kill me because I didn't put Skeleto in S tier, put it in the comments below. I read all of them. If you want to change something about this, well, you're watching it on YouTube, right? Be the change you want to see in the world. I would like to see other tier lists that you guys do and post it on YouTube. Have a good one and... Uh... Denle el del al máximo.